I'm Frank Dams, uh, Senior Manager of Ertico, and I'm also the coordinator of the NAPCO Surf Working Club 42, which you will learn about. And all of this aspect, I'm also the TNITS uh, coordinator of the Ertico Innovation Platform. So you will learn all about these things in this presentation uh, on NAPCOR in the context of the Mobility as a Service. And I thank uh, Solutions Plus to give me the possibility, the opportunity to explain what this is all about to you. So I hope you enjoyed the meeting and uh, let's go forward with the slideshow. So this presentation will give you an insight in a few slides on the what is the NAPS, what does it mean, what is it in the EU data infrastructure, then the related policy and regulations of course, and especially towards what is called the regulatory data streams, uh, including the multimodal data streams, uh, the coexistence and the complementarity of data standards uh, will be in this presentation, the NAP core goals and the go forward actions and then finally some words on the EU mobility data space, what it is, current gaps, actions and so on. So let's go forward with the main topic of the national access points in the European infrastructure. So what is an app? An app is a federated infrastructure for the member states national access points. So each member state has uh, each member state has let's say an access point uh, and it's in fact a single URL where uh, you can find data and uh, this data comes from authentic data sources so it's a kind of referral element now the way it works is explained in the website navcore.eu uh, and it is supported by legislation, uh, the ITS Directive uh, from the Commission and the related delegated re regulations. Uh, they require that each member state must establish a national access point for mobility data. And by now, the, the work is ongoing, but many of the uh, member states have established uh, national access points and uh, mobility related data is published and made available for instance travel information services so the goal of the action uh, well in fact it is to empower the national access points as the backbone for the its digital infrastructure and to structure and to facilitate national and european wide operational coordination for the harmonization and implementation of the European specifications. So quite a bit of ambition in this uh, NAPCOR project. And uh, in fact, if you look to the objectives, then you see that there are four objectives. Uh, first of all, it is within the objective of the European to become a leading player in the data-driven society. Second, uh, it will stimulate the single market for data, uh, the free movement of data within the European, within Europe and between the sectors, to the benefit of the citizens and travelers. Um, of course, uh, database technologies will also make it possible to limit the impact of the transport sector on the environment. So here you find the relation to the Green Deal. Um, and indeed, uh, the data or the fuel for the technology development, which is an evidence in this world. So, if you look to uh, what is going on with the NAPCOR project, it's an amazing project because it's the first project that unifies uh, all the member states. There are 36 participants, uh, including the notified bodies in Europe, uh, 29 beneficiaries, so they all get money and subsidy. Uh, 26 EU member states, so it's one member state that is uh, following and not really active, uh, but the other 26 are active in the project. And then you also find supporting organizations uh, in Caso, Ertico, and then the, some organizations related to public transport. We have three associated partners like UK, uh, Switzerland, and Norway. And it started the 1st of April, which is the official starting date, but in practice it is exactly one year old. Uh, we started about one year ago in November. And yeah, we are going for completion date on the 31st of December 2024. So this slide uh, explains, let's say, the regulatory and uh, policy around all these uh, initiatives coming from the Commission. 
I'm not going to explain this slide. It's for your reference. If you get the, if you get the slideshow afterwards, uh, then you can look at the regulatory aspects uh, because these are mentioned in the references on this slide. The important element is now how does it work and why is it there for? So this slide explains a little bit uh, what it does. Uh, it, is, it is much more than that, but I like to concentrate on what is called the regulatory, regulatory data streams. These are the data streams that come from an authoritative source, the road operator, the public authority, the member state, maybe, maybe also the cities or any authority in the country. So, and then you see that there are three data streams mentioned. Uh, the first one is TNITS, uh, this transport network ITS. It used to focus on the 10T highway infrastructure of Europe, but now it's much broader and it also covers, it's also the attempt to cover the whole landscape and all the home uh, of Europe. Every road should be uh, have, uh, generate data in TNITS format. Datex uh, is uh, maybe many of you already know that it's much more uh, known uh, by the member states because it looks to uh, dynamic road data um, and in many uh, member states use it for as a source for uh, traffic management applications. And then finally, you have also the public transport data, uh, which is governed by two standards, NetEx and Siri. Uh, and uh, that is also between, let's say, the road operator and the service provider. So these data streams are parallel, uh, at least in this picture. Uh, and it is a little bit of history because they all started because of, let's say, a certain need in the market. And uh, one, like TNITS, was looking to exchange data between the map provider and the road authority, uh, the, in fact, the geographical road authority. Um, and this provides on, let's say, the base layer data. So you have to look in that, uh, that there are layers. And uh, if you look, for instance, to your GPS uh, application on your phone or in your car, then you see that uh, the map is established by static information, the roads and the traffic signs and whatever. Uh, which is typically addressed by static data in the, in the delegated regulations. We address it as base layer data. And on top of that, you have, let's say, additional data that allows you to look at, uh, for instance, uh, traffic jams or, or the alternative routes, uh, which is a service layer data. And um, this data is typically handled by Tartex. And then you have, let's say, another part, uh, interesting part, that comes up in the multimodal world, where it is the public transport data. Um, and yeah, NAPCOR, uh, so you see that these data streams are, let's say, uh, streaming to the national access point of every member state. And the idea is that there is a national access point, so that one data is published in one country, also appears as a data element in, via, in the map of the other country. So that's the federated aspect of the national access point. It is the map provider and the service providers that uh, further work on this data. They process the data and then they stream it to the data users, the final data users, to consumers, you could say, uh, which can be the trucker car, the truck, the pedestrian, the public transport, uh, etc. Now, um, so you see the important element of the national access point that it's a single URL that should be known by everybody and where you can find these data streams. Now let's focus a little bit to uh, the multimodal data model. Um, that's interesting because it also consists out of a static and a dynamic part, uh, which is, uh, you can compare it with TNITS and Datex, but in fact, it's a little bit different. Uh, if you look, uh, these are both uh, SEND standards. Yeah? So these are uh, really existing standards that can be used. The NetEx is in fact a real data standard. So it looks to the public transport data, uh, the topology of the network, the schedules, uh, the fare info, the alternative modes that you can take. Uh, and then there is also a new, uh, uh, let's say, activity related to the European passenger information accessibility. Uh, the, then what happens in the multimodal world is that there are a lot of players, they all produce data and the question is of course how can they, they exchange this data. So therefore there is this dynamic Siri model, exchange of transport information between computer systems. 
to make it, uh, yeah, there are people have been working on these standards and uh, Transmodal is, for instance, a methodology, in fact, if you look to me, that provides an abstract model of common public transport concepts and data structures. So it's a kind of common language. And then data for pt that is, uh, let's say, the project uh, that uh, aims to support the implementation of these standards into the, yeah, to the world of Europe, let's say. So, um, it's, it's quite interesting to, to see that. Uh, and in the context of NAPCOR, uh, there are, uh, let's say, open gaps, uh, work to be done uh, within NAPCOR. And in fact, if you look to that, then we are talking about, uh, let's say, the overlaps uh, that exist today in the standards. So it is not completely clear uh, that which standard to use or what kind of purpose. So it can, let's say, confuse the data user. Uh, so we have to look at, into that. And that's why we have an alignment supporting group in NAPCOR to look at these overlaps and to these, let's say, elements. But on the other hand, it's not only overlap, that means that data is produced twice, uh, maybe another format, maybe another coding, but also uh, it is maybe the lack of data. So uh, and that's interesting because uh, NAPCOR has defined uh, some, uh, let's say, priority applications like parking, mobility as a service, safety, automation, alternative fuel, cycling. So if you look to this, uh, the idea is also to uh, research if the standards that we have, the NITS data and, and, uh, and, that, and uh, public transport data, if they are ready to support these applications and their use cases. So this is an important element that we will take up in 2022 uh, two and three. Huh? So, um, so if you now look uh, this context of the national access point has a bigger context. Uh, this bigger context is called the EU mobility data space. Uh, yeah, and as you see, there are still a lot of uh, discussions going on what it really is. Um, what is the EU mobility data space? Uh, Men, for instance, in Germany, they think it's a URL, a URL for publishing data. And you can find a lot of data in the mobility data, the data space of the EU, which is basically the German mobility data space, call it. You can compare it to a national access point uh, where you also find private data. By the way, also the national access point can uh, contain private data, data coming from private organizations, if uh, they comply with certain uh, rules. Um, so, is that the national access point a data space or is the URL in Germany a data space? Question. Right? It's a matter of interpretation. In fact, if you look to more the ethical definition of, an, of the data space, it's more like an ecosystem. So a value chain of data exchange between stakeholders towards end users. So in fact, the data is provided by the data published. Uh, generator, it generates data, then you publish the data and it goes along the processing of data and the use of data in applications. So this is really a data chain. And in fact, you can, let's say, look at that as the ecosystem. Uh, and we call maybe this ecosystem a uh, mobility data space. So if you look at the flow of data along this uh, data chain, then, uh, and certainly if you talk about regulatory and alternative data, then there are some needs that have to be fulfilled. First of all, can the data be trusted? And uh, the trust in data is uh, a big world, a big world where you say, okay, it's of course related to the quality of data. Is the data bad? You don't trust it. The brand recognition, uh, yeah, is it coming from the authority? Do we trust the authority? Is it a member state authority or is it another source? So the brand that we give it to, uh, it is an important element of the trust. Uh, authentication, of course, uh, can, we, can we rely on the, on the authentic uh, source? Uh, do we know the source? Can we, can we make contact with it? Uh, then we also talk about the validation confirmation of the data. So data is provided, uh, we, we must be able to validate it and also confirm if the data is right or not. Uh, to a certain extent, or is 
to a certain extent this is done by compliance rules uh, that have to be defined. That's also work going on in the group 5 of uh, the ARP and AppCore project. The sovereignty mechanism is important, so once you produce data and you share it, can you then still have control about this data use? So the sovereignty uh, mechanism. And now we are talking about the data exchange support, the infrastructure about it. So this is still, uh, let's say, ongoing. So if you now look to uh, NAPCore, then NAPCore is all about data accessibility. So it, it says how you can find the data. It doesn't say if there is data. Of course, the main topic is to have data available. And uh, that is uh, maybe the topic of the next uh, project that we are considering in Europe to focus on data availability and to make sure that uh, the data can be shared. Uh, so looking to these aspects of trust, validation, compliance rules, sovereignty, and the necessary building the necessary support for sharing this data. Okay, so uh, thanks. Uh, I hope that I have given you, uh, let's say, an insight on what we do in AppCore. And yeah, of course, uh, I know that this is a broadcast, so you are not able to give, uh, send me questions. But of course, here you find my article email, and you are, of course, welcome to have additional information. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot, and uh, I see you. Bye.